Welcome to the IntraZone Roadmap Pit Stop January 2019 edition. This is a bonus monthly show that will answer what is rolling out for SharePoint and related technologies into Office 365 today. Now, these episodes are brief, fun, and relevant, and like I said, focus on the now. This is a show about supporting good change management based on feedback from you, our customers, business partners, users, anybody who thinks about SharePoint and related technologies in Office 365. This is for you. This month, I talk with Tejas Mehta, Senior Program Manager on the SharePoint Engineering Team, about what we're doing and planning for SharePoint and Microsoft better together. Consider this the message center for everyone, not just for cloud admins. We'll keep you informed, current, and ahead of the ever-curving roadmap. We've got a lot to cover. This 2019 is poised for takeoff, starting with January. Starter flag is waving. Buckle up. 2019 is going to be a rip-roaring roadmap ride. Here we go. What's new, what's new, what's new, what's new with you? We have bucketed all the things that are new into distinct sections for this episode. Consider these the sponsor names on our SharePoint race car. So our sponsors today are Inform and Engage, Teamwork, Related Items, A Few Corrections, plus The Future, two teaser items of what's coming in February 2019. Let's make our sponsors happy. Let's do a little sponsor ad. Sponsor number one. Inform and engage with dynamic employee experiences. What do you do throughout the internet to make sure that everybody is on the same page marching forward? One of the things that we've been talking about a lot are hub sites and the concepts of how you roll up information from across multiple sites. And the thing that we're adding to that toolkit is adjustments to the events web part. The events web part now rolls up items from numerous source sites. So you can configure to show content from various source sites with choosing things ranging from this site, select sites, all sites in the hub, things like that. This update enables you to choose where the event items come from, one site or many, and how they are to be displayed in a film strip mode, or now we're actually introducing a compact mode to save space when you want to highlight a lot of information on the same page. You can additionally refine how they appear by entering in a category name to filter by, or selecting a date range as simple as all upcoming events, next two weeks, select a date range, you're in charge, you program what events you want to show, But the key here is that you can roll up a lot of event items into one view wherever you'd like. The next update in this space is the Microsoft Stream mobile app is now available fully for download for Android and iOS. This is a great mobile app to watch your org and team videos while you're on the go. And even if you'd like, take them offline. And that's for when you're traveling on the train, on the plane, in the car, if you're the passenger. Whatever you want, get those videos Get started with the Stream mobile apps for iOS and Android by visiting the App Store and Google Play. We'll put the links in the show notes so you can get to them. Try them yourself. This next one is really a fix, and it's gotten a lot of attention visually when it didn't quite work. Of course, we listen to a lot of feedback and what the community is saying, and the community wanted consistency. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a color fix for Office 365 group-connected team sites from that logo perspective. If you don't actually put your own custom logo, we default by using some of the uh, acronym of the site name and a color that you choose. But when you go to something like the SharePoint Home or you go into the SharePoint mobile app, for a while we had mismatched where we didn't actually take on the color that you had chosen. That fix is now in the system, and I'm pleased to say that already received on the community, I've seen a lot of tweets saying that it's been received, that now if you choose a color at the site level, it'll propagate all the way through and you see that site listed on SharePoint Home and the SharePoint mobile app. That is visual coherence that people have been asking for, now delivered. Wanted to make sure you knew about that because now it just works. All right, on to sponsor number two, one that collaborates the hug that turns G-forces like a flock of Canadian geese flying in formation. Are you ready for the next sponsor? Here we go. 
Teamwork is one of our important sponsors this week. First thing that we want to talk about in the realm of teamwork is Mac Files On Demand. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, this is a OneDrive feature. Why are they talking about it on the SharePoint IntraZone oriented roadmap pit stop? Well, I'll tell you, everything about the new Mac Files On Demand that's now generally available applies to SharePoint document libraries as well. So whether you're working on a PC or a Mac, Files On Demand will help you take your personal library in OneDrive as well as share shared libraries in SharePoint in Office 365. This will help you access all your files, download them, take them if you want, or at least get visibility on all of your files without taking up storage space on your device. And this is true as you go across multiple devices. If you're leveraging this across multiple Macs, multiple PCs, or a mix of PCs and Macs, whatever your heart's desire... Uh, This is something that's a feature that's on by default for new users of the Mac OS Mojave. This feature will be ramped on for existing users over the coming months. And lastly, admins continue to have the ability to disable or enable this feature via the preference of either uh, your org or your entire company. We have more information and links to show notes to learn how to get Mac files on demands and certainly to learn more if you want to read a little bit more. Now, this last one in teamwork is just something that we're signaling. It's actually a feature that is more for admins this month and will turn into a feature for end users, certainly in a very impactful way. So we are signaling that starting April 1st, 2019, it will no longer be possible to restrict an entire organization, an Office 365 tenant, to classic mode for lists and libraries. Lists and libraries may still use classic mode using the granular opt-out switches that we provide at the site collection, site list, and library levels. Additionally, lists that use certain features and customizations that are not supported by modern will still be automatically switched to classic mode. So this certainly is a big switch for people to be able to choose. Do we want to go to modern? Do we require uh, classic? But it is something that we're making a little bit more of a push towards modern. Uh, And really why I mention it as a signal to end users is we're laying the foundation for numerous features rolling out next month. Uh, of which I'll tease in the What's Coming Soon section. We'll also put a link where you can actually go learn more about all of those if you want to get a jump start before the next roadmap pit stop. But I will tell you, it's a lot of great end-user features at the list and the library level. Let's go talk to Tejas Meta. Tejas Meta is a senior program manager on the SharePoint team who owns all of the things that we do to integrate SharePoint with Microsoft Teams. So as we roll off of the racetrack into the pit stop, I want to describe the pit stop that we actually chose here. So to meet up with our friend Tejas Mehta, principal program manager on the SharePoint team, we actually went and visited here where where we're at now, which is Building 34. I don't want to tell you the exact office because then you're going to get people knocking on your door. But we're here in Tejas' office. Tejas, thanks for joining the pit stop. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me on. Uh, anything you can share with us that just sort of gives us a notion of how did you actually get onto the SharePoint team and, and maybe, a, maybe a role or two before? And where? Sure. Yeah. Some of you, uh, your listeners might already be familiar with me in some capacity because you and I, in my previous capacity, we were teammates. So I spent a fair amount of time in the SharePoint marketing organization working on things like enterprise content management, e-discovery. You might remember uh, OneDrive for Business uh, was called SkyDrive Pro at some point. So I was a technical uh, product manager on that. So about three years ago, I moved over to an engineering position uh, focused on team collaboration scenarios, primarily how we think about SharePoint and how we integrate with Office 365 groups. And with that comes along Microsoft Teams also. So I spend a lot of my time focused on how we can make SharePoint experiences light up really well across the group's platform um, and how they light up and in the Microsoft Teams experience. I remember when you were starting to look over to see about joining the engineering team. I think you said something that you had a meeting with Adam Harmitz, who we've had on the show, and you said it went really well, and you were just crossing your fingers. And I thought, man, how is he going to bridge that gap going from marketing to engineering? And I will tell you now, three years later, you've done wonderfully. I, I've always heard good things about you. And then, of course, working with you recently on a lot of these SharePoint plus Microsoft Teams deliverables, um, it's really great to have you as a peer working to get those into market. Yeah, it's been a really fun ride. Um, 
you know, working with customers in an outbound marketing capacity was a ton of fun. At the same time, sort of building product and working with designers and engineers uh, has been uh, extremely rewarding also. So let's think about uh, just from a, the philosophy and design of a SharePoint in Microsoft Teams experience. So SharePoint News pages, lists, other things that are being cooked up and thought about. But when you think about what's the philosophy, what are we trying to accomplish for our end users to bring SharePoint content into Microsoft Teams? Yeah, so I think I'd sort of frame it in two ways. One, uh, as a SharePoint organization, we will continue to innovate and bring really great uh, content experiences to our customers, whether it's through news, uh, pages, lists, libraries, etc. Um, but if you happen to be uh, interested in uh, collaborating in this new way of working, in the, uh, you know persistent chat in Microsoft Teams and having a single pane of glass to do your work, we want to make sure that SharePoint shows up really well there as well. So all of the the great experiences that you would expect from SharePoint, uh, from files, lists, pages, etc. We want to make sure that. Um, if you are committed to working in this new way inside Teams, that all of those experiences um, are available to you. So if I were to kind of take from the philosophy and then put it into the reality of, well, what are people actually seeing light up, uh, especially when they're in Microsoft Teams? How do they bring in that SharePoint content? Um, I think of three features, and I know that you've managed all of them. There's the real fun one, the, you know, the, the sort of SharePoint existed before Teams, but now we want to bring a Teams experience to that existing SharePoint team site got a fun name that everybody's given it. It's Teamify. Yep. Just talk through maybe, uh, you know, when building out that feature, and that's something that's now rolling out to our targeted release customers at the time of this episode. Um, you know, thinking through and the work that you did working with the team's team, and really, why is it that we enable that, uh, you know, not just going forward, but to also retrofit retro, uh, a lot of the SharePoint team sites into the team's world? Yeah, I'd start by taking a step back to say that in the SharePoint service today, we've got millions of site collections that are not what we call modern in the sense that they're not connected to an Office 365 group. And we get a lot of feedback from customers saying that, hey, we've enabled groups and teams in our organization and now our employees are you know, creating new groups, groups and teams for the same collaborative spaces that already exist with these uh, existing SharePoint sites. So last year we rolled out Groupify, like another sort of fun name for a, a feature that we have where you take these uh, existing sh- sites and you bring groups functionality to them. And we got a lot of feedback saying this is all well and great, but we also want to be able to bring the team's capability to these, these sites as part of the modernization push. So uh, as the SharePoint organization, we love it when our customers are using our modern features. Groupify, we think of it as sort of a click stop along that journey for customers that are ready to go to uh, Microsoft Teams. And we've been rolling out this feature uh, that we call internally colloquially, uh, referred to as Teamify, which introduces an entry point in SharePoint uh, for customers that want to take their already group connected sites and, and add Teams capability to them. Nice. So with Groupify and Teamify, I think it kind of leads us into the other things that you're working on that aren't fully shipped, but we've certainly been showing them uh, as what's to come. And that's the new files experience. So of course, there's the default experience of the files tab. But what really we want to bring is this real SharePoint document library or the real files experience. Can you talk about some of the features that if you were using files in Teams before, but now with this new files experience, what are some of the things that people will see differently? Sure. So if you if you are familiar with the Teams experience today and you're in a particular channel and you click on the files tab, you get a monolithic list of files that looks a little bit like a document library, but doesn't necessarily have all of the uh, the functionality associated with it. We took a hard look at some of the files experiences across Office 365 that are serviced by SharePoint. The Outlook Groups files experience was initially built that way as well, kind of a bespoke experience that was pulling information from SharePoint, but was being rendered in in, uh, their own way. And last year, we started making some pretty big investments in building shared engineering controls, which effectively exposed the full fidelity uh, capabilities of document libraries in something that can be hosted in experiences outside of SharePoint and OneDrive. So, for example, if you're in the files experience in Outlook groups, for you would see basically the same set of capabilities uh, with from a commanding standpoint, 
custom metadata, column formatting, and all of the view switching, grouping, filtering, all of the things that one would expect with a document library uh, are all being incorporated into this shared engineering control. And as you might have seen at Ignite and SharePoint Conference last year, we started showing off some of the in-progress work that we're, uh, we're doing on, in that front as well, and we're bringing that to Teams. So when you click on that Files uh, tab in a channel, you will get, uh, in the fullness of time, as we roll this uh, feature out, uh, the document library experience in Teams. So there's a new files experience in Teams, but really what you're also saying is it's a shared common experience of how you work with files across Office 365. That's right. We really want to get to a stage where if you are working with files uh, across Microsoft 365, uh, it should look familiar. The set of uh, capabilities should be the same. Uh, and that's exactly what we're working towards. If you think about file picking experiences mm-hmm. or how files generally are sort of uh, represented in different experiences, we want these experiences to show up in exactly the same way. It builds a lot of user trust in that they can get to their files from irrespective of which experience they're. Yeah, and the thing that I always like to remind people when either showing this or answering questions around it is it is the same set of files. You're getting the view onto those files, and it's a common view on what you can expect to do with those files. But at the end of the day, no matter where you come into the files to view them, they are the same set of files. That's exactly right. We want to get at the, we as Microsoft want to get out of the business of building 10 different files experiences for 10 different um, endpoints. We want to build it once, engineer it the right way, so that as we add functionality to the document library, they automatically accrue to all of these other endpoints rather than have the team's organization build something for it or, you know, Outlook going and building something for it. So that's our vision. So beyond the files experience, I know one of the other things that you're working on before we get into maybe some future teasers is the ability to just more easily bring in lists and pages. And pages can be news as well, news articles. And so you've built a really nice dialog box that when you go to click new tab, choose the SharePoint tile, it'll prompt you and show you basically here's all your available pages, here's all your available lists. And those two, if I can confidently say you can maybe uh, address whether it's accurate, is those are always also bringing in the same fidelity. Pages as you expect in SharePoint work as pages as they are in Teams. Lists with all their functionality, views, power apps, flow, all the column formatting, those also come through. Same as the new files experience is a common experience. Same with pages, lists, and news. That's right. So I think that uh, we do want to bring the full richness of SharePoint into the Teams experiences. And as you know, you can add a tab using the SharePoint tab and pick from uh, lists or pages from the backing SharePoint site. And we want those to be represented in as full fidelity as possible with all of the capabilities that that uh, that come with. Obviously, we're engineering a lot to get the files experience in. We're going to continue to do the same uh, across all experiences. The SharePoint conference, of course, is just around the corner. And if we can use the roadmap pit stop to sort of maybe tease out what are the one or two things people can think about when they think in this space of SharePoint in Microsoft Teams? Anything you can share with what you're going to be showing and sharing for the first time at the SharePoint conference, but in the context of not breaking any disclosures? Yep. What, what should people think about, you know, SharePoint conference, new stuff for SharePoint Teams, SharePoint plus Teams better together? Sure. Um, without letting the cat out of the bag, I can confidently say... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that... I would characterize the work that we've been doing thus far is really around nailing the fundamentals, bringing the richness of SharePoint experiences from a file fidelity and feature perspective. Um, The next set of work, uh, which is what I would characterize as sort of the one plus one equals three, really making SharePoint and Teams light up to to bring more richness for our end users is sort of bringing, A, I'd say bringing more Teams experiences into SharePoint. Uh, I won't say more than that. And also bringing additional SharePoint uh, value to Teams users. And not to put you on the spot, so you can certainly say pass, Mark, but on the roadmap as it is today, the Microsoft 365 public roadmap, the Microsoft Teams team has listed the notion of private channels. Not breaking their news. That's out there. It's public. Maybe just to address, like, what does that mean in SharePoint world? Again, without breaking disclosure, but I know there's a lot of interest around private channels. What does that mean for the stuff that gets shared within the private channels that's not just the conversation? Yeah, uh, the Teams organization is is very focused on delivering scenarios that will enable private channels uh, for customers. And if you think about SharePoint as being the content store that backs 
you know, all of the files, lists, and page experiences in Teams, one can posit that when private channels becomes available for the for our customers, that SharePoint, the SharePoint model to support that will match. So that if one was uh, working inside the context of a private channel in Teams and uh, were engaging with any of the content that is serviced from SharePoint, uh, that it would respect any of the private channel roster tackling and permissioning that one would expect. So that means you are designing not only a new files experience in Teams, but you're also making it a consistent files experience across Office 365. That's right. And I think what I would add here is that while we're starting with the files experience and building that as a shared thing that's hostable across different experiences, we have an entire portfolio of shared controls that we think are going to add value because we will engineer them once and that they're going to be available across different experiences. You might be familiar with the group card, for example, uh, where that lights up across different um, uh, M365 properties. Think of things like file picking, um, file hover cards, details panes. These are all types of things that we want to encapsulate in these reusable controls that can be hosted in different places. Again, driving home that familiarity for our customers and building trust that when they interact with these types of things, that they look the same, they behave the same way. Um, It's just better for our customers. Nice, better consistency. And of course, more times that people have used it, the next time they see it, it won't feel like a foreign action. They'll say, oh, I've seen that before. I may be in Outlook now, but I know how to do it. That's great. So if you add it all together, I mean, why, why does this really matter to our customers? You know, what are, what are they going to benefit from maybe what we're seeing? Uh, our hope is that uh, customers go through that journey of taking their existing valuable SharePoint properties and going through what we call sort of the modernization journey uh, with their sites. We have data that suggests that those sites that end up having a team associated with them, whether they're created from teams or added after the fact, result in better collaboration, i.e. people are uploading files, uh, editing those files, and collaborating around them, just increasing the value of the underlying content. So we do believe that the work that we're doing does accrue to value for our customers, and that's why we're really excited about bringing these capabilities. Yeah, I've seen... um both our MVPs and ourselves, you know, promote it as it's Teams plus SharePoint, not Teams or SharePoint. And really the value of the Better Together story is that it's great to actually have real numbers behind that people are more engaged with their content. And hopefully beyond the content, they're having great conversations that don't make it hard to get back to the content. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you for obviously everything that you do between Microsoft SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. Better together, you are the better together. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Mark. All right, back on to the racetrack. Thanks for hanging out into this pit stop. Here we go. Sponsor number three. I think it's the big sticker on the front of our SharePoint race car. Related items. These are the things that are related not only to SharePoint, but also found in Office 365 to make your productivity soar. First related item, Office 365 for Mac is available on the Mac App Store. This is a pretty big one. You know, our front door to everything where we store, you know, if SharePoint is the content service for all of your content, Office, obviously, is a big way to get in to work and share and view and edit all of that content. We're committed to delivering the power and simplicity of Office in an experience designed specifically for Mac, and we continue to make significant investments in that platform. We're excited to announce that Office 365 is now available on the newly redesigned Mac App Store. With one click, Mac users can download the cloud-connected, always-up-to-date version of the Office suite including full installs of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote, and OneDrive. I'll end with a quote from Phil Schiller, Apple's Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing. Quote, We are very excited to welcome Microsoft Office 365 to the all-new Mac App Store in Mac OS Mojave. Apple and Microsoft have worked together to bring great Office productivity to Mac users from the very beginning. 
Something that we've been doing with Microsoft Flow across SharePoint now comes to OneDrive. There are now out-of-box flow templates in the OneDrive user interface. There's two of them that I'll talk about. You can do a copy as PDF workflow, and you can do a request approval workflow. Run the flow with one click, and you create a copy of any document, or send a one-off for approval to anybody that you name. Super easy to use, consistent experience, just like you would out of a SharePoint document library. Now you can do it off of your personal work files in OneDrive. I have a couple of updates that I want to share around the SharePoint migration tool. This tool is designed to be used for migrations ranging from the smallest set of files that you have to large-scale enterprise migrations. The SharePoint migration tool will let you bring your information into Office 365. Three things that we're updating. There's an updated user interface with a new simplified control service aligned to the visual themes of SharePoint in Office 365. There's no doubt what this tool is designed for, and now it helps to see it visually. You also will have the ability to start new migrations without having to restart the SharePoint migration tool. And lastly, it's more easily to access and view the settings needed to support your migration scenario with a new simplified interaction flow and review experience. Lots of great updates keep coming to the SharePoint migration tool to help you get your content into the cloud, into Office 365. Next up is the things that we're doing at the very parent level of the user experience in Office 365, and that is we're updating the Office 365 suite header experience. So if you have not branded the top-level suite header experience, you're now going to get a more consistent uh, communication blue color and a new settings experience where instead of having the settings gear lead you to a drop-down menu, it'll lead to now a much more consistent edit pane that includes inline help experience. So this is just getting started to roll out through targeted release customers. It is something that we've heard a lot of feedback on where they want consistency across the applications and certainly how we adhere as SharePoint OneDrive in that context of the Office 365 suite header experience, super important. On this next item, I first have a question for you. Have you seen the new SharePoint icon? And I know you have if you can answer this question. Is it still blue or is it teal? Pause, give you a second to think. I heard your answer. You know it's teal. So the thing that you're going to see are these new icons starting to roll into the Office 365 app launcher. When you go to open up another Office 365 app, you'll soon see the SharePoint icon, the new teal SharePoint icon. And I can't tell you how I'm excited to see that roll out. And that's probably the first place you'll see it. And then it'll cascade and you won't be able to not see it. So uh, t have a look on where the new teal SharePoint icon appears in the Office 365 app launcher. The last thing in this section is to talk about Yammer. Yammer has been doing a lot around adoption and use, and certainly within your organization, it helps you use and adopt all of your products and all of your events. Um, but they are building out a updated Yammer Adoption Resource Center that will help you with planning your strategy, planning your launch, helping you with your communications and whatnot. But it is like other things that we've talked about on the roadmap before with OneDrive and SharePoint now giving you a more central location to learn all about Yammer adoption. Team's done a really nice job consolidating everything. Super useful tools when you want to get the most out of Yammer. Sponsor number four is our toughest and most important sponsor, Corrections. Of course, we want to make sure that anything that we previously announced on the roadmap pit stop that needs corrections is actually then shared uh, with as much accurate information as we can. I've got two items for you today. The page designs, which are sometimes referred as page templates, is on pause. We will soon post a more refined date of when we'll start rollout of page designs. And as of now, we've listed it as coming by the end of Q1 of calendar year 2019. Also, after a short delay, mega menus... Site header and site footer are now rolling out. The second message center post update was sent a week ago. This is message center number 172503. That indicates that the team is prepping to roll out the features to target a release over the next one to two weeks. So you were excited then, you're excited now. Mega menus are here and they're here for you. Okay. Time to look a little further down the track and just around the bend. Let's talk about two items coming in February of 2019. The future. <laughs> 
sponsor number five comes to us with a little bit of time travel. So if we can put on our time travel hats and zoom into the future, here are two things that are coming up in February 2019. Thing one is really three things. A SharePoint list column trifecta, if you will. Are you ready? Thing one, point one, column totals. Thing one, point two, add columns between columns. Thing one, point three, column drag and drop. These are just a teaser of things to come that are based on the thing that I talked about, that foundational element that we're laying of that move to modern. There are so many great things coming to lists and libraries. It'll blow your future mind. Thing number two in Microsoft Stream, they're adding the ability to have quizzes and polls embedded within the video playback. They've got a nice post about this if you want to go read more. It's coming soon. We'll make sure to have a link in the show notes because you can see the future of Stream. If you want to see what the future of Enterprise Video is, just look at Stream All Up. But this feature is going to be really critical for how you can build out training materials and additional elements within your video. Very cool. That's it with the teasers. We're close to the end of the pit stop. Let's apply the brakes a little and cover the important resources that are always available to you all year long. Resources, resources, resources. There are so many resources, and we want to make sure that all those resources are up to date and they have your eyeballs and your feedback on them for what we need to do when you get there. We hope it's been a nice, smooth, speedy ride hearing all the things that rolled out in January of 2019. Now, we'd like to make sure that you have a good list of resources to turn to throughout the year. We'll put a bunch of important links in the show notes. These will take you to learn more about the Message Center, the Microsoft 365 Public Roadmap, our own SharePoint community blog, and all things Twitter, where you can see what the SharePoint handle is tweeting, and of course what I and my peers are tweeting, all to keep you up to date. These are all the places you can go to keep up to speed and stay ahead of the ever-curving changes, all to your benefit, all based on your feedback, and certainly all we hope with great change management and visibility. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Interzone Roadmap Pit Stop January 2019 edition. Stay engaged, ask questions, push us to get the best information and insights that you need. We're here to put our and your best change management foot forward and pedal to the metal. Stay safe out there on the roadmap. Till next month, thanks for listening.